Good morning, students. Once again, we are starting the financial statements of a business. In our previous lecture, we have already covered preparation of trading account and we have also taken a few exercises on it. Once again, I am uh, revising the trading account format and its exercise, which we have already taken in the, our previous lecture. So on the screen, you can see format of trading account is given. In the trading account, we record purchase and expenses related with the purchase. And on the credit side, we record sales and the closing stock. So the format is in front of you. You can see in the format, credit side sales is written. From that sales, we have to minus the sales return, if any. Then you will get the net sales. And closing stock is written. As we discussed, closing stock is recorded at cost price or market price, whichever is less. So, if you have cost price and market price, then you have to take the price of price. If you have to take the price of price, then you have to take the As per the prudence concept, as per the conservative concept, we can anticipate uh, likely losses and expenses, but we do not anticipate uh, gain. So if the market price is higher and cost price is less, then you have to take the less price. You have not to take the price which is higher. Because if you are taking the higher price, that means you are anticipating profit. So while recording the closing stock, you have to keep in mind the price which is uh, lower that we have to take. Then on the debit side, you can see debit side, we have the opening stock. Opening stock indicates the stock which was unsold last year. Last year's closing stock becomes the opening stock of the current year. So in the closing stock, in the opening stock, we will take closing stock of the last year. And this year's closing stock will become the opening stock for the next year. Then the second item is the purchase. From that purchase, we have to minus the purchase return. So you will get the net purchase. Then all the direct expenses which are related with the purchase and production of goods are recorded on the debit side of the trading account. So you can see here various expenses are given under the head direct expense like freight, octroi, dock charges, excise duty, royalty and so on. After recording all this item, we have to make the total. So if the difference is coming on the debit side, that indicates gross profit. If the credit side total would be more than the debit side, then the difference will come on the debit side and that would be the gross profit. And if the difference is coming on the credit side, that would be the gross loss. Credit side will difference tab aega jab aapka debit side ka total jada hoga to difference credit side per aega jo gross loss hai. Ab e jo bhi gross loss or gross profit aapko mila hai usko aap transfer kar doge profit and loss account mein. In the last class we have taken few exercise on the trading account. Now today we will first understand format of the profit and loss account and thereafter we will take few exercise on the profit and loss account. So as I told you in the financial statement we prepare trading account, profit and loss account and balance it. Formation of the trading account we have already covered in the previous lecture. Now today we are going to begin with the profit and loss account. See profit and loss account is prepared in order to find net profit or net loss. 
from the trading account you get gross profit and gross loss in trading account we take only the direct expenses which are related with the production and purchase of goods but apart from that there are various types of other expenses which are known as indirect expenses which are related with the office related expense administration related expense sales related expense and some financial expenses like uh, interest paid to bank if we have taken a bank loan then we have to pay the interest to the bank if we have issued any shares sorry if we have issued any debentures then on debentures we have to pay interest bank charges so financial expenses also we take in the profit and loss account so in profit and loss account we take all the indirect expenses whereas in the trading account we take only the direct expense here it is necessary to understand what is the difference between direct and indirect expense so direct expenses are those expenses which are directly related with the production of goods or purchase of goods and they are recorded in the trading account debit side whereas indirect expenses are related with the office expenses administration expenses financial expenses selling and distribution expenses they all are indirect expense and they are recorded in the profit and loss account so in profit and loss account first of all what we will do whatever gross profit or gross loss we have found in the trading account that we will first bring in the profit and loss account and thereafter all the indirect expenses we will record on the debit side of the profit and loss account apart from income from sales which we record in the trading account credit side if any other income is given like discount received rent received commission received dividend received interest received commission received any type of other income they are recorded on the credit side of the profit and loss account so in the profit and loss account credit side what we record we record first of all the gross profit which we brought from the trading account and all the other income which are not directly related with our business but we have made investment somewhere and we have received some income say for example if we have invested in the shares of any company then we will receive the dividend so that dividend received will be recorded in the profit and loss account credit side similarly if you have invested in the debentures of any company then you will receive the interest so interest received will be recorded on the credit side of that profit and loss account so any other income apart from sales we record on the profit and loss account credit side thereafter on the debit side we will record all the indirect expenses as i said like uh, office and administration expense selling and distribution expense financial expense even the depreciation on the assets which we charge that is recorded in the profit and loss account so after recording all this you will get here net profit or net loss now let us see the format of the profit and loss account so that you can better understand how this account is prepared here on the screen you can see format of profit and loss account is given see the first side credit side credit side you have recorded by gross profit brought down this gross profit we have found in the trading account so in trading account if you have gross profit that you have to transfer here on the credit side but it is not necessary that trading account will always give profit sometime trading account may have gross loss so if there is a gross loss then it will be recorded on the debit side so debit side you can see gross loss brought down both will not come any one will come if there is a gross profit you will record on the credit side but if there is a gross loss then you will record on the debit side so in between or is written you can see or is given any one will come depending upon the result of trading account after recording gross profit on the credit side of the profit and loss account all indirect income like rent received discount received commission received interest received dividend received any type of income apart from income from sale of good they are recorded on the credit side of the profit and loss account 
Then on the debit side, as I told you, if you have gross loss, then you will first write the gross loss. If there is no gross loss, then it, nothing will come there. We will record all the indirect expenses like office related expense, administration related expense. So you can see here debit side salaries are given. Salary to staff. It is one type of indirect expense. In the trading account, we were recording wages which are given to the production workers. Whereas here we record the salaries that is given to the staff who is doing, who is busy in the administration of the business, who are working in the office. Then rent, rates and taxes paid, printing and stationary charges paid, postage expense, audit fees paid, and all types of expenses are recorded on the debit side of profit and loss account. These all are the indirect expense. As I told you, expenses related with the purchase and production of goods are recorded on the debit side of the trading account. And expenses, indirect expenses are recorded in the profit and loss account debit side. So all these are the indirect expenses which you can see here on the debit side of the profit and loss account. Now let us see a few exercise on the preparation of the profit and loss account. In the profit and loss account, remember the final result which you will get that would be the net profit or net loss. In profit and loss account, if your credit side total is more, then difference will come on the debit side and that is the net profit. But if the debit side total would be more, then difference will come on the credit side and that would be the net loss. Whatever with the answer will come profit or loss that we will transfer to the next statement and that is the balance sheet. First of all, let us see the exercise. Now on the screen, you can see one exercise is given. From the following particulars, prepare profit and loss account for the year ending 31st December 2010. Now here we have to decide out of the given item, which item will be recorded on which side of the profit and loss account. Whether you will write on the debit side or credit side that we have to decide. So let us start. First, you can see gross profit is given. So gross profit we will record on the profit and loss account credit side. Then trade expense. That means selling expense. When you are selling the goods, then the, all the expenses related with that are known as trade expense, trading expense also, we can say. This is one type of indirect expense that we go on the debit side. I am writing the short form CR and DR. CR means credit, DR means debit. Then carriage on sales is given. That means it is like a delivery van expense. When you deliver goods to your customer, then the charges paid for the transportation are known as carriage on sales. So it is also one type of selling expense, indirect expense that will be recorded on the debit side. Then office salary, office staff salary, it is indirect expense, debit side it will go. Any type of legal expense, legal charge that will go on the debit side. All these are the indirect expense because they are not related with the production. They are not related with the purchase. They are related with the administration of the business for running the business. Then audit fees given, debit side it will go to the profit and loss account. Then any amount donated, if you have donated something to some legal or spiritual institution or charitable institution, or any type of donation, any type of donation given, that is the indirect expense and that will be debited. Then miscellaneous expense, that means sundry expense. Small, small expenses merge in one head, sundry expense, that is also indirect expense. 
recorded on the debit side. Selling expense. Expenses related with the sale of goods. Indirect expense or debited. And the last one is the discount allowed. Discount we give to our customers. When the customers make early payment, then to motivate them, some amount is taken less from them. That is the discount. Say, for example, I have sold goods of 50,000 to one customer for three months. And I promise him that if he will make payment within one month, then he will be given 10% discount. Suppose our customer is making payment within 10 days, 15 days. Instead of three months, he is giving us early payment. So as an incentive, we will give him some discount. So as I told, 10 percentage of 50,000, suppose 5,000. This is one imaginary figure I have taken. So 5,000 rupees discount I will give to my customer because he has made early payment. Otherwise, I have to wait for three months. So that is a discount allowed. This is one type of our expense related with the sales. So on the debit side, all these type of indirect expenses will come. Now see, the next point is given here. Lighting. And this lighting is of office. Very clearly they have mentioned this is the electricity charge of office. So definitely it is an indirect expense. It will go to the debit side of the profit and loss account. But suppose lighting and in bracket is written factory. Then that would be the production expense. If in bracket they have mentioned factory, then it would be the production expense. Then we have to record in the trading account. So you have to see whether it is a office lighting or whether it is a factory lighting. Depending upon that, you have to take the decision. So lighting will go on the debit side of profit and loss account because here it is written office lighting. Then commission received. As I told you, apart from sales, any type of income received, any type of income from investment received, that will be the indirect income and it will be recorded on the credit side of the profit and loss account. So it will go on the credit side. Then discount received. It is also our income. We give discount to our customers when they make the early payment. Likewise, when we purchase goods and when we make early payment, we also get discount from the supplier. So that is our income. So that is recorded on the credit side. So if you have made credit purchase and if you are making the early payment to your supplier, then your supplier will give you the discount. That is the discount received. Remember here, discount given and discount received. That means discount allowed and discount received is a cash discount. Basically, there are two types of discount. One is trade discount and one is cash discount. Right now, whatever we are discussing, that is about the cash discount. Because when we make the payment of cash and we receive some discount, that is the discount received. Similarly, when our customer make payment to us and we give some discount to him, that is a discount allowed. So this discount is related at the time of receipt and at the time of payment of cash. And that's why it is a cash discount. So cash discount are of two types, discount received and discount allowed. Then bad debt. What is bad debt? In our first lecture, I have very clearly mentioned then when we make the credit sales, some of the, some of the customers do not make payment. They deny that we don't have money and we will not make payment. Suppose I sold goods of 60,000 to one of my customer and he made me payment of 50,000. Out of 60,000, 50,000 is already received. But he is now not paying 10,000 rupees to me in spite of several reminders sent to him. Now we are sure that this person is not going to give us this money. Then we can consider it as a loss and that loss is known as bad debt. So what is bad debt? Bad debt is the amount irrecoverable from our debtors. That means our customers to whom we have made the goods, uh, we have sold goods on credit. So bad debt is one type of loss that is related with the credit sales. So it is a indirect expense and debited to the profit and loss account. Now here they have given one more point drawing. 
See, drawing is not the item of profit and loss account. What is drawing? When the owner of business withdraw money from the business, when the owner of business withdraw some goods from the business for his personal use, then it is known as drawing. अगर मैं किसी बिजनेस का ओनर हूं और बिजनेस में से कैश विड्रॉ करता हूं या तो बिजनेस का गुड्स विड्रॉ कर जाता हूं मेरे पर्सनल यूज के लिए तो मेरा ड्राइंग्स हो जाएगा तो ड्राइंग वी रिकॉर्ड इन द बैलेंस शीट एंड दैट ड्राइंग वी सबट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम द कैपिटल इट इज नॉट रिकॉर्डेड इन द प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट सो इट विल नॉट कम इन द प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट इट विल कम इन द बैलेंस शीट एंड राइट नाउ वी आर नॉट प्रिपेयरिंग बैलेंस शीट दैट्स व्हाई आई हैव कैंसल इट but definitely when we have to prepare balance sheet then that drawing will be subtracted it will be minus from capital then income tax what is income tax income tax we have to pay on the profit if you are running the business then we have to pay the corporate tax on our profit individuals also pay income tax businessmen also pay income tax this is a corporate tax tax paid by the businessman now we are here learning financial statement of sole proprietor that means financial statement of a single owner so here this income tax will be considered as a indirect expense and that will be debited to the profit and loss account or alternative treatment you can give you can consider it as a drawing and you can minus it from the capital because income tax is the personal expense of the owner he has to pay tax on his income he has to pay tax on his profit then stable expense i don't know what is this stable expense maybe these are some fixed expenses which every month they have to pay so it is not related with the production and purchase so we will write on the debit side of the profit and loss account export duty when we import goods then we have to pay tax when we export goods we have to pay tax import duty and export duty so when you are importing goods from the other countries then that would be the purchase related expense so import duty will be recorded on the debit side of the trading account because that would be the purchase related expense but export duty when we have to pay export duty when we sell goods to the other countries and we pay the export duty so it is a selling related expense that's why it will be debited to the profit and loss account so you have to keep in mind if import duty is given then that will be recorded on the debit side of trading account but if export duty is given then it will go to the profit and loss account debit side why so the reason is purchase related expense we write in the trading account and sales related expense we write on the profit and loss account debit side then the traveling expense debit side of the profit and loss account unproductive expense it is also indirect expense so there are two types of expense productive and unproductive productive expense means those expense which give some result say for example when you pay wages to the workers to the production workers then they are the productive wages they help us in the production of goods and that's why we incur that expense so there is a productive expense but there are some unnecessary expense which does not give any result which then which does not add to our income they may be unproductive expense so they they have some amount of 3000 rupees unproductive then postage and telegram expense and office rent so all these expense are related with the office that's why they are debited to profit and loss account now suppose here it is given factory rent instead of office rent suppose it is given factory rent then that would be the production expense because in factory we make the production so factory rent would be the direct expense and it will go to the trading account debit side but if the office rent is given then you have to record in the profit and loss account debit side 
So I think you have must you must have understood this. What should be debited and what should be credited. Now based on this, now let us see the solution of this exercise. So in this exercise, we have to prepare only and only the profit and loss account. Now see the solution. Here on the screen, you can see the solution of this exercise. You can say first I first on the credit side, gross profit is written because in the question gross profit was given. So credit side gross profit is given to like 50,000. Then in the question commission received was given. Rent received. Sorry, discount received was given. This two other income was given. So apart from this three item, nothing else was given in the question. So only this three item will come on the credit side of the profit and loss account. While preparing profit and loss account at the top, you have to mention profit and loss account for their end date 31st December 2010. Whatever year is given that you have to mention. Credit side, we write uh, gross profit and all other income apart from sales because sales is already recorded in the trading account. Then all the indirect expenses which are given in the question, you have to debit on the debit side. Please remember when you record on the debit side, then it is custom to record two, two trade expense, two carriage on sales, two office salaries like way. So it is a custom, it is a tradition that debit side we write two, and on the credit side, we mentioned buy. Now you will ask me, sir, why buy and why to? So see, accounting concepts and conventions we have covered in the first lecture in the beginning. In that I mentioned, there are some customs and traditions which are followed year after year by the accountant. So it has become custom of recording two on the debit side and to record buy on the credit side. Else you will see many books on accountancy. They even do not mention this buy and two on the debit and credit side. They just record gross profit, commission received, discount received. Even they do not bother about writing buy. So it depends upon the custom of a nation. In our India, we record this two and buy. Many countries do not, uh, many authors do not record this two and buy. So it is immaterial whether you write or not, but it is better because we are in, in India and all the Indian accountancy book, you will find writing to and by. So debit side, we record all the expenses which are given in the question. Now see here, one thing you will not find here. On the debit side, you will not find the income tax. In our question, income tax was given. Here, income tax on the right hand side, you can see 1000 rupees. So, as I told you about income tax, income tax is the personal expense of the owner. We are preparing the financial statement of the sole proprietor, and the sole proprietor has to pay tax on his income. So, whatever profit he will earn from the business, on that he has to pay the tax. So, that's why it is a personal expense, and that we will record as a drawing. Many books on accountancy, you will find that income tax is recorded in the profit and loss account debit side. It depends upon the treatment given by the different accountant in a different way. Now, out of this, what which one is right? So, in India, we have accounting standards and accounting standards says any personal expense we have to record as a drawing. Any personal expense of the businessman, we have to record as a drawing. So this income tax, we should record as a drawing. But you will find many books on accountancy. They write income tax in the profit and loss account. What we will do, we will consider income tax as a drawing and we will write in the balance sheet. 
we will minus this income tax as a drawing from the capital. And that's why it is not shown here. Okay. So after writing all the expenses, you will get, you will make the total. Here, total of the credit side is more 2,51,450. Out of 2,51,450, when you minus all the expenses of the debit side, when you minus all these expenses which are given on the debit side, these different types of expenses which are given here, when you minus, you will get net profit and the net profit is coming 1,91,300. That is your net profit. Now what to do with this net profit? This is a profit earned by the owner of this business. As we are preparing the financial statement of sole proprietor, only one single owner, so whatever profit we will get that we will add in the capital of the owner because ultimately this business is run by one person. So whatever profit will come that he is going to take and that's why will be added in the capital of the owner. This treatment is different in case of joint stock company and in case of partnership firm. That we will come in the next semester, but right now we are concerned with the sole proprietor. Here what we will do, here we will add net profit in the capital of the owner. This treatment is different as I told you in case of joint stock company. Similarly, in case of joint stock company, treatment for the income tax is different. Slowly, slowly you will learn and whenever that topic will come, I will remind you how we were dealing with the sole proprietor and how we are dealing with the partnership and how we have to deal with the joint stock company. That I will remind you whenever that point will come. Now, anyone has doubt in this question? If you have any doubt in this question, you can ask me. Anything which is un not understood, please reply if you are online. Jakari screen start karke chale gaya ho. Hello. Bhaskar Roy. Mansi. Okay, so I think you have no doubt. Both achche bache koi puchte hi nahi hai koi. So now, next point. Okay, Mansin answer the yeah, no sir, no doubt. Good. So our next point is balance sheet. Now let us understand preparation of balance sheet. We are learning financial statement of sole proprietor. In the financial statement of sole proprietor, Basically, they prepare two account and one statement. Two account include trading account and second profit and loss account. Trading account is prepared to find gross profit or gross loss. And profit and loss account is prepared to find net profit or net loss. In the trading account, we record all the expenses related with the production and purchase. Whereas in the profit and loss account, we record all the indirect expense, all the office expense, all the selling expense and all the financial charges. 
expenses related to the bank, expenses related with the borrowing of money, they are recorded in the profit and loss account. Trading account gives the result that is known as gross profit or gross loss. Profit and loss account gives the result which is known as net profit or net loss. After preparation of trading account and profit and loss account, our next step is preparation of the balance sheet. Now, what is balance sheet? So, see, every businessman is interested in knowing at the end of the year. At the end of the year means maybe 31st December or maybe 31st March. As per the income tax department, all the businessmen have to follow 1st April to 31st March. But there are many businessmen, they follow 1st January to 31st December. Whatever may be your financial year, whatever may be your accounting year, at the end of the year, as a businessman, you must be interested in knowing what are the assets you have, what are the assets you own, and what are the liabilities which you have to pay. So in order to know the position of the assets and the position of the business debt and liabilities, we prepare one statement and that statement is known as balance sheet. So balance sheet is nothing but it is a statement showing the assets and liabilities of a business at the end of the year. Say for example, I started my business on 1st April 2021. 1st April 2021. Then after one year, that means on 31st March 22, it is but obvious that I would be interested in knowing how many assets I have, what amount I have to pay to the outsider, what is my capital in the business. For that, I have to prepare one statement and that statement is the balance sheet. So in balance sheet, what we will record? In balance sheet, we will record assets, and liabilities. As you know, we follow the business entity concept. There are different accounting concepts which are used in accountancy. In our previous lectures, we have covered business entity concept. And as per the business entity concept, business and owner of business both are separate. And we record for the business. We prepare account for the business, not for the owner. Suppose I am the owner of any business and my name of the business is Messrs Kishore. So there are two persons here. Messrs Kishore, that is the name of the business. And Mr. Kishore, that is the owner of the business. So I am preparing or my accountant will prepare account not for the Mr. Kishore, but Mr. Accountant will prepare account for Messrs. Kishore. That is for the business. So business is a separate legal entity in accountancy. And all the records are kept for the business, not for the owner. Whatever amount owner has given to the business, that is whatever amount Mr. Kishore has invested in his business, that is known as capital. And that capital is also liability. Because business and owner are different. So the separate entity concept, business entity concept says that if any amount is given by the owner to the business, then that would be the liability of business towards the owner. So say for example, if I have invested 50 lakh rupees in my business, so that 50 lakh rupees is capital, but that is the liability of business towards me. Business has to give me back this 50 lakh rupees when the business will be closed. So same in a partnership firm also. Partners and partnership firm both are different. Accounts are kept for the partnership firm, not for the partners. Whatever amount partners have given to the partnership firm, that is the liability of the firm towards the partners. Same concept is applicable in case of joint stock company. In the case of joint stock company, amount is contributed by the owners, that is the shareholder. Equity shareholders give money to the business. So equity shareholder and joint stock company, these are the two separate person. Amount given by the equity shareholder, which is known as the equity share capital, that is the liability of the company towards the shareholder. So when we talk about liability, then liability are of two types, internal liability and external liability. Amount given by the owner, that is the capital, is the internal liability. 
and all the amount borrowed from the outsider by business is external liability. Say for example, my business, Messrs. Kishore, that is the name of the business. Suppose this business has taken a bank loan from the Bank of Baroda. Suppose it has taken a bank loan of 10 lakh rupees, then that is the outsider liability, external liability. And I have invested 50 lakh rupees in my business. So that is internal liability. So capital given by the owner is the internal liability. And amount borrowed from the outsider, like from the debenture holder, from the bank, from the relatives, from the friends, that is the external liability. Both internal and external liability is recorded in the balance sheet liability side. Okay, we are running business, so definitely we must be having different assets like lane, building, plant, machinery, cash balance, bank balance. All the assets are known as resources and they are recorded on the asset side of the balance sheet. So now we will understand preparation of the balance sheet. Let us see what is balance sheet. So balance sheet is a statement showing the assets and liabilities of a business on a particular date. It shows the financial position of business and that's why it is also known as position statement. So balance sheet ko position statement bhi kaha jata hai. Okay. 